year. What's up, basketball fans? I almost said Giants fans, but what's up, basketball fans? Hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with unpopular opinions. It's been a while since I made any type of video on basketball. In fact, the last video I made did not come out great and did not do great. Was my uh, playoff prediction video for the NBA playoffs. Um, Yeah, like that video didn't exactly go great. My uh, predictions weren't exactly the best. And in general, I just sort of stayed away from NBA coverage since then for a number of reasons. Um... But I'm here today to give you guys a uh, Western Conference Finals preview, just because um, if I am gonna want to branch out with this sports channel, I do want to cover I do want to cover basketball and I want to start somewhere. But also because I feel like I got a couple things to say about the Western Conference preview as a f outside fan that doesn't pay as much attention to it as say other YouTubers do. Like sometimes you just, you just need to take a step back. And hear what other people think about the situation and whatnot. You just need views from all over the place. I believe my two cents thrown in there maybe could help you guys with forming an opinion on the Western Conference Finals preview. But before I get there, just you know, just to show you guys uh, <laughs> how bad my predictions were for the playoffs. I mean, this year's playoffs in general, it, it's been a mixed bag. We got really only one upset, like as a series, as a whole, as a series, and that was, in my opinion, the. Uh, Thunder losing to the Blazers. Other than that, we got a couple upset games, most notably the very first couple of games with when the Magic took one from the Raptors and where the Nets took one from the 76ers. But other than that, it's been relatively like how everybody thought it would play out, basically, you know? So the playoff bracket as of right now, uh, just to update you guys if you for some reason don't know, Denver beat San Antonio in seven games in the first round. Portland beat OKC in five games in the first round. The Rockets beat the Jazz in five games in the first round. And the Warriors beat the Lakers in six games in the first round. Which was actually a surprise. I expected them to like either sweep or gentleman sweep the, Lake, the the Clippers. In the second round, the Warriors beat the Rockets in six games. And then the Blazers beat the Nuggets in seven games. It was a bit exciting to see the Blazers move on in the, in the fashion that they did. But it was very disappointing to see uh, the Rockets go down in the way they did. Especially after last year, they really had Golden State on the ropes. Uh, they had an extremely good chance of actually dethroning the Warriors. And then this year, I said I said this in my uh, prediction video. But um, I really thought the, the Warriors were vulnerable this year. And now, they're at their most vulnerable point. You're not going to see them uh, basically more mortal than they are right now. Like They're without KD, they're without Cousins. They're back down to their main core. And this is the best shot you got at them. I just don't think Portland could do it, you know. But on the east side, uh, for the first round, we got Toronto beating Orlando in five. Philly beating Brooklyn in five. Boston sweeping Indiana. Milwaukee sweeping Detroit. Second round, we got Milwaukee giving Boston the gentleman sweep, which was an extreme surprise. I Listen, I said that Boston is not as good as everybody hypes them up to be. They've played as the seed that they are. They played like a fourth and fifth seed all year, and that's the seed that they earned. Uh, so I didn't really expect much from them, but I also did not expect them to get just one game against Milwaukee. And then Toronto beat the 76ers in seven games in one of the greatest playoff shots I've ever seen in history by Kawhi Leonard. So now we got our two conference finals as uh, Golden State versus Portland and Milwaukee versus Toronto. So let's talk about Golden State versus Portland. This is an interesting series for a lot of reasons, of course. Um, the Trailblazers is ba have basically been counted out by everybody this year. I mean, except for Trailblazers fans. I don't know if you could go outside and find anybody that would truthfully tell you, oh yeah, I believed in the Blazers this year to make it to the conference finals. And it's not as though we were all wrong to count out, count out the Blazers. I think... Um, I think it's just uh, this them actually making here, making it here is just a nice thing to see because it shows that hey man, this this is the playoffs. Anything could happen, you know what I mean? Like, but the reason we count them out, it's not like it was without good reason. I mean, they got swept by uh, Anthony Davis and Rajon Rondo the last time we saw them in the playoffs, and the year before that, uh, they got knocked out by the war by the Warriors, and the year before that, they got knocked out by the Warriors. So I mean, for basically three years now, or you could argue for most of this decade. The Blazers have been 
like just a non-factor team in the playoffs. They've always, they've consistently made the playoffs for the better part of the last five, six years, but never really do anything much. Like they're either always a top three seed, but they end up playing like a bottom three seed. And then this year is the first year we see them playing like their seed number. They were the number three seed this year and they actually played like it. They uh, took care of business against OKC in handy fashion, battled against Denver, and once that once the Denver game hit seven games, I knew they were gonna win. I, I expected Denver to go in there and beat them, but as soon as it actually went to seven games, I was like, the way the Blazers are playing, with a toughness to them, a grittiness to them, and Damian Litter is actually hitting these deep, like far out shots, and CJ turned on Michael Jordan mode or something. It's like, yeah, like I just had a feeling they were gonna win. The Warriors, on the other hand, um, they've had a, a rocky year. And I believe this was their most vulnerable year just because I think that they, as, as an organization, think and believe that KD is out the door. So they kind of have this desperateness about them. Like, let's get one last championship to either uh, keep him here or to call it a day on the dynasty. Let's get one last run. And it's like the relationship among them has been rocky all year. And then in, in the Houston's game five, uh, KD went down with his injury. Cousins went down with an injury. I mean... Not in the same game, Cousin went, went down to, uh, I believe either, he just went down before, I'm not sure when, but the Warriors at this point are back down to their main core of Steph, Clay, and Draymond, and that's something I'm really happy to see, not that I wish an injury on anybody, but it's, I'm really happy to see them back down to what made them great. It was always Steph Curry, uh, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green that made them the Warriors, and then when they added KD, that's what made everybody angry is because they had three great players. They had three of the best players in the NBA on their team, obviously, and then they had KD. But it, this video is not about that. What, is, what I'm trying to say is everybody uh, is either sort of like counting them out because they lost KD or they're just saying that they're going to have an extremely hard time against the Blazers. And I don't think so. I think Golden State could really win this in uh, six games. Like I do think the Blazers are going to put up the fight because... They definitely have something to prove this year. And in my opinion, I think they already proved it by making it this far. Nobody expected them to make it this far. But I think this is the series where Golden State reestablishes that. And, and more, more so, Steph and Clay reestablishes that, yo, we could win without KD. We know what everybody's saying. We hear what the media and people have been saying for the past two, three years. That uh, with KD, we're unstoppable and that if he's gone... We're, we're going to be beatable. They're, they want to prove that without KD, they could win when he leaves. If uh, if he does leave, they want to prove that we're still the team to beat with or without five All-Stars on the roster, on the starting five. And I think they're going to prove that, like, handedly. Like, they beat Houston handedly without uh, Kevin Durant there. And go back two years ago, two, three years ago, when they were a 73-win team, they did not have a, a Kevin Durant on there. When they, uh, before the year before, they won 60 some games and they won the NBA championship, they didn't have KD on there. They had an extremely good core in Steph, Clay, and Draymond with a great bench and great coaching both of those years. Now, Steph, Clay, they both have stepped up their game to something else. Steph Curry is a top 10 player. Clay Thompson, I believe, is a top 15 player. I think Draymond is kind of a bit more stagnant. He's obviously more of a factor on the defensive end. And um, the one thing they don't have with them uh, in this game, in this series that I do think Portland has over them, the only thing Portland has over them is a better bench. But I still think this is going to be a proven series for Golden State. I think they come in here and they take it in, in six games. I think Steph has a couple huge games. I think Clay has a couple huge games, and that's that's really going to be enough. Like the role players will take care of it, the coaching and the rotations will take care of it. I think this is the series that everybody, including myself. Who had originally doubted the Warriors are just proven wrong and and they reestablished themselves as we're number one in the league right now we made it to number one in the league without Kevin Durant and we're gonna show you how we did it and that's that's me spitballing as though KD is not coming back for the entirety of the series Nah, he's probably gonna be back after like game two so I on, on Portland side on Portland side now they definitely have a chance to win a couple games in this series like I said I believe it's gonna be six games um, they need to take one. Just speaking uh, for Por for Portland now, being devil devil's advocate, if Portland wants to have any type of chance, they need to take one game in Golden State. And they do have a chance to take one game in Golden State. If they could steal game one or game two and then go back and just and just go back to Portland 1-1 when KD comes back, 
I think they're uh, set for having a good series here. Because if they go back down to, back to Portland and Kevin Durant comes back, I think it's all over from there. It's going to be a sweep. They need one game at least in Golden State. And they, they have a chance to take it here. I, I think they're going to take it. I think it's going to be game two. Because um I, I think the Warriors are going to come out tonight. I'm recording this um right now on Tuesday. And they play tonight at 9. The video, y'all you guys will see it on Wednesday. So whether or not I'm wrong will be shown then. But... I think uh, the Warriors come out tonight and they show everybody this is going to be a big shootout. They show everybody that we're still here. But in order for Portland to want, want to have any chance with this, they're going to need to take a game in Golden State and go back and see what they could do at their home court, maybe take a game, and then we have a series. But like I said, this is all about, I think this series is all about the Warriors proving to everybody we, we don't need KD to win, which is something that they do need to prove because he might be gone this offseason. So that's just... My thoughts on the situation as a casual basketball fan. I don't follow it as hard as I do with football, but I do watch it. I do keep up with the times, as uh, everybody says. I do have a bit of two cents to throw in. Let me know what you all think. Let me know who you think will take this series. Let me know who you think will go to finals. Um, I'll throw up a picture at the end of the video here, my original playoff predictions, just for you guys to have a laugh at it, because it was completely ridiculous. In fact, let me just talk about it real quick before I leave the video I had um in the first round I had Golden State beating the Clippers in five the Rockets uh beating the Jazz in three I mean in nine and three in seven the Thunder beating the Trailblazers in six and the Spurs beating the Nuggets in seven so I did get the Rockets versus Warriors right for the second round but I did not get Thunder versus Spurs on the other side, in fact, I got quite the opposite. Uh, I got I really thought OKC was going to do something this year. I mean, in fact, I had them going all the way to the conference finals. And I had the Rockets beating the Warriors in seven games. Obviously, that did not happen. A huge letdown. And then on the eastern side, I had Bucks beating Pistons in five. Celtics beating Pacers in seven. What is that? I had the Nets actually taking down the 76ers in seven. I had big faith in the Nets. I was a big believer in them. I'm not disappointed with what they did because I'm still proud of them. Nobody expected them to be in the playoffs, but, you know, I, I was a big believer in them. And then I had the Magic losing to the Raptors in five. So my semi, uh, Eastern semis uh, basically turned out correct except for Raptors v. Sixers. So, I mean, that's about it. Uh, my, rise up right now, my finals prediction is completely off base. I got Bucks versus Rockets. I think it's going to be Bucks versus Warriors. But, um... Speaking of the bucks, that's going to be for the next video. Like I said, let me know what you all think. That's it for today. I'm out. You're...